Hello everyone, my name is Fredo, I'm a studio tech, and today I'm going to be showing you how to clean Penny and Giles fader packs. This particular one is off a of Neve 88R, um, but they're all pretty similar as far as uh, just the cleaning is concerned. Disassembly and reassembly might differ a little bit, but once you get it all apart, it's uh, pretty much the same. So, in order to do this, I'm going to need a couple things. I have a tech wipe, I have some gaff tape. 99% anhydrous alcohol. I have a 564th Allen key. That's just for this model. Some of them are screwed on. You know, they're going to require different tools. This one, just a little uh, small Phillips or Posi drive would probably be better, but this is all we had available today. Um, a tech swab, and this is some fader lube. This is actually Dow Corning 51050 CST. And this is the actual lubricant recommended by Penny and Giles for their faders. Uh, a lot of people don't bother using this, um, but I think that's foolish, and I think you should use what is recommended by the manufacturer. Um, this stuff is pretty expensive, which is why a lot of people don't end up using it, and you can't buy it in small quantities. You have to buy a pretty large bottle, and it's a couple hundred dollars, but if you need a small bottle like this if you only have a few consoles um, small bottle like this will last you a couple of years so if you need a small bottle like this go ahead shoot me an email and I can uh, sell you one or you can go ahead and just track down one of the larger bottles and uh, it'll last you for the rest of your life and probably all the way through your grandkids so let's go ahead and dig into this fader first I'm gonna take the cap off and I'm gonna unscrew it from the faceplate with my Allen key. Again, depending on what fader uh, pack you're working on, this could be, you know, Phillips. So, just got to make sure you have the right tool for whatever you have. Once that's unscrewed, I'll just unplug it and set the faceplate aside. This plug's being kind of a pain. And here is the fader assembly. What I like to do is I face the motor towards me and then I move the fader carriage all the way to the right and then I tape off the string so it doesn't fall off this capstan. So on this particular one you can see the capstan has grooves on it that make it a bit of a pain to re-thread it if this falls off. Some of the SSL models are much easier, they're smooth, and they have kind of like a fishing line around them, and you can just rewrap them once it's back together. But this one is, it's kind of annoying, to be honest, trying to get it back on. Um, so in order to save quite a bit of time, what I like to do is take a little strip of gaff tape. Don't need much. And again, I'll push this carriage all the way to the right, and then I'll just put some gaff tape over the string to make sure it stays put while I'm disassembling and reassembling this thing. Um, I'm going to take my Phillips and remove the two end screws. Set them where I can uh, see them because I don't want to lose them. And pull the end cap off. This one has black rubber bumpers on either side of the carriage rail and this one was stuck to the end cap so if you don't see one when you pull it apart check the end cap but there should be two little grommets like this little o-rings one on each side they might be black they might be orange depending on what fader you have you know but just make sure you don't lose them because they are handy and I have no idea where to source a replacement on them so far so it's uh, kind of a pain when you start running low on them now, I'm going to unscrew the other side as well. And now that that's off, I can pull this whole piece out and remove the dust cover. This, on this particular model, it just pops off. I'm going to set that aside. And I'm going to unscrew the rod from the end plate and make sure I get that O-ring off from this side. See, on this side, it's stuck to the rod. Put that aside. And now that I have this off, I'm going to just go ahead and clean it. I'm going to take my anhydrous alcohol, 
soak this tech wipe and I put a decent amount of pressure on this and just clean all the junk off of it. Um, a lot of people don't have the proper lubricant for these rods so they end up using some sort of silicon grease or whatever someone recommends them on you know gear sluts or something and it just gets all gunky and gross and collects all sorts of dirt it's just terrible so I make sure I get all that junk off and then I set it aside make sure it doesn't roll away onto the floor and has, has to be clean again I'm gonna clean the uh, dust cover as well since I just have it off in front of me and the wipes in my hand and on this one I can see on the inside somebody had used some of that grease so it's kind of stuck on the inside of this dust cover and I'm just gonna make sure I get that off wipe it really good this one's pretty clean sometimes they're really really filthy you really gotta work to get the, the grime off but this one's not so bad set that aside set the tech wipe aside we're kinda of ready to uh, start disassembly on this so first thing I like to do is on the connector side that's attached to the motor on this particular um, model there's two tangs holding the wires down the power to the motor I unfold those and then I take this heat shrink and I gently pull it aside I make sure I'm not pulling on the wires so I hold the wires firmly with this hand and pull this out of the way and you'll see why I do that in a minute. I'm going to try to get it as close to the connector as I can. And um, then I'm going to pull out this side of the contact. Uh, and I'm going to... Well, first I'm going to actually have to remove this fader carriage in order to get this out. So, I just pull this string off one side. You know, I gently roll it around the pulley. And then once one's off, you can just kind of pull it out. And you want to be careful with this carriage because it's got contact fingers on it, and they are very delicate. Can you see those? I'm trying to get my camera to focus on them. Uh, kind of. Oh, well. You'll see what I mean if you're pulling one of these apart. Um, just be gentle with them. You don't got to baby them, really, but just, you know, make sure they don't get snagged on something and bend out of the way because those uh, fingers are prone to do that. So a lot of times you can try to pull this out and you don't have enough room with the wires. The wires keep it from pulling out to the side. So what I figured out is if you fold them inside, I'm going to try to show you how to do this. If you fold them in front of it and then through the fader opening, you can kind of push it through like this and pull it out this way. Make sure these wires don't get hung up. And then you can pull it completely out that way without, you know, tugging on the wires at all. And now that these are both out, I'm gonna take my tech wipe, soak it with some alcohol, and I'm gonna clean them pretty good. A lot of times I uh, see techs like to give it a wipe with some water after doing this. I don't really bother with doing that and I haven't really had a problem just wiping it with a clean, dry tech wipe after I soak it with the alcohol. Um, again, if you want to do that, a lot of techs do. You can just give it a little bit of water and then wipe it with a dry one, but I have no issues just making sure it's totally clean and then drying it down. So now that those are all clean, we can focus on cleaning the carriage. You know what, first thing though, I'm going to get this back in the housing just so it's kind of out of my way. And you'll see I kind of put it back the same way I took it out. And you want to be gentle with it. You don't want to ever tug on these wires because they're connected using some sort of like conductive wax or something. And it's kind of difficult to reattach them if you yank them out by accident. Um, I suppose you could buy some of that wax, but it's not the type of thing you can just, you know, go to any electronic store and get. It's pretty specific stuff, so I guess that's what the internet's for if you want to go down that road, but I'd rather just not deal with it. I'm going to grab my swab, soak it with alcohol, kind of flick some of it off, the excess, and then I'm going to take these fingers and I'm going to go with them and just kind of roll the swab over them, just kind of getting some dirt off. These ones aren't so bad. Then I might clean where the contact, uh, where the 
slide is actually where it slides in the um, carriage. I'm sorry, um, assembly, and clean this one as well. Now this is important. So inside this carriage, there's two plastic or um, rubber maybe um, grommets, and they ride on the rail. And sometimes they get worn uneven. And if they get worn uneven, they start to drag in a certain direction. And that's not really that big of a deal when you're moving the fader yourself. But if the computer is playing back automation, it will notice that drag and it will think something, you know, like you're fighting it from doing, performing the automation. And it will abort the automation. And, of course, you do not want that to happen. So I take a lot of uh, care making sure that these get really, really clean when I pull them apart. And I uh, do that. I just kind of clean the outside. And then I'll push the swab through. Sometimes they're a little bit too big to do so. But sometimes, like these swabs, these swabs are pretty much perfect. And I'll just spin it as I push it through. I'm not going to get it back through that way, so I'm going to push it through this one. Again, be really careful of those uh, fingers. Once I've done that, I'll just clean the outsides pretty good. And set the swab aside. Before I put this carriage back in, I'm going to put this other slide back through. And I do that because, again, with these fingers, they're very, very delicate. So if I have this inside and I try to put one of those contacts in, it's going to potentially catch the fingers and bend it. So I try not to do that. And when I put the carriage in, I make sure that the fingers are facing out so they don't catch it all. And I just slide it in, get the string over this pulley, pull it all the way to the right again, and then I can just kind of snap that string back on. Remove the tape. We're good to go. So I'm going to start with putting on one of these end caps and making sure I don't pinch any of these wires when I do it. They have a place that they kind of slide into. You'll feel it snap in. And I'll do this bottom screw first. Hold the end cap in place. Next, I'm going to move the carriage to the opposite side and I'm going to take the rod and just kind of get it started into the carriage and all you need is one drop of this of this fader lube right where the rod meets the carriage just one drop small drop and I like to spin it as I push it through just to make sure it covers the whole rod evenly and once it's through you're going to want to remember to take one of these black rubber stoppers, put it over the rod, and you're ready to screw it back on. Sorry if I pull this stuff close to me. Um, it's just kind of reflex when I'm working on something, and it's kind of awkward to hold it out towards the camera. So, forgive me. I'm going to put this um, dust cover on now. And on this particular model, it just kind of snaps into place. Some of them it screws in, kind of, but this one has just got really tight tolerances, and sometimes it takes a minute to get it to fit properly. There we go, on that side. The other black grommet, or O-ring, or whatever you want to call it, bumper maybe. And then the other end stop. Fiddle with the dust cover again. Make sure it's on. And the bottom screw. There you go. 
Grab the face plate, plug it back in. And screw it back down. After I screw this in, I like to just look at the uh, look at the fader carriage and make sure that it doesn't come too close to either side at either end of the throw, because if it makes contact with the side, even just a little bit, that might ground this out and tell the computer that it's being touched. So any sort of automation will be interrupted at that point. So you want to just check it, make sure it's got plenty of room. Put the fader cap back on, and you're all set, ready to plug it back in. So, good luck with cleaning your console. Let me know if you have any questions.